How's it going, YouTubers? Uh, recently, I had someone ask me um, uh, to do a quick video on tack strip cutters and the reason why I used them because they was they was from those from the UK and they was thinking about getting some and just wanted to know the benefit of using regular tack strip cutters versus a tin snip or a hammer or something like that. So here in this video, I just wanted to do a pretty quick little video and just show uh, why I use them. How's it going, Jared? Thank you guys for joining, I appreciate it. Uh, why I use the tack strip cutters and the benefit of the tack strip cutters over, um, let's see here, I got four things laid out here. Uh, some people, yeah, uh, use just a hammer. Thanks, Jared, again, I really appreciate it. Some people use uh, regular tin snips. These are the actual tack strip cutters here that's made for cutting the tack strip, and some people out there use hatchets. So I got four different things here, and I wanna run over all four different things and show the benefits of the tack strip cutters uh, over the, over the prep, or why I choose the tack strip cutters over the others. And let's go ahead and just get into that. Uh, real quick, I said I was gonna do a sneak peek of the studio. I'll show you guys what I got going on here really quick before I get into this. Um, I told you the other day I was going to take some of that barn wood off of there and stick on the front of it. Well, this here is what I've got done so far. This is gonna be the front of it. That's gonna be the front porch right there. So that is what it's looking like. Looks old, like a farmhouse, and that was exactly what I was going for. So let's go ahead and go with um, the, uh, we'll do the hammer, I guess, first. So, uh, let's see here. I'm going to turn this around, I guess, where I can see here. This is always a little bit awkward doing this, like, okay. I like to be able to see what I'm doing on the screen. Okay, so a lot of people will take the tack strip cutters. Oops. Will take uh, take their hammer when they get to a wall or something like that. They'll smack it, and well, it didn't even break where I smacked it. Let me try that again now. So let's smack it like that and break it up. That's okay. It's kind of you can see what it does there. It makes it a little bit choppy and stuff like that. You see how that broke off there? Uh, it'll work, but there's definitely nothing pretty about that. A lot of people, like I said, you can tell that I don't do it. I don't use a hammer. But anyway, that was, uh, these tack strips are weak. Uh, so even uh, chopping it all the way through with one hit with a hammer, you can still look like it sees, uh, um, chewed up, looks like somebody just took and chewed, chewed the end off of it rather than cut it. So if you're going around and you're actually placing tack strip like so, I mean, let's let's turn this around here. So I tell you, if I was going to um, leave a job or the customer was even going to be there and I was working around something, I would be embarrassed if I walked in and if the customers walked in and sees that. So. I don't like the way it looks. It might be kind of convenient or whatever like that, but then again, I wouldn't want the customer to see it. So it's it's really, I mean, if you're trying to do a 45 or a 22 degree angle or something like that, let's see here, I got plenty of stuff here. Let me just grab something. So we'll say, we'll say this level right here. Uh, is on a 22 degree angle. Ooh. Sorry about that. You guys should have been a little bit more prepared about that. So we'll do this right here, okay? So if I want to do around this corner right here, I could do this and uh, <coughs> there you go. Jared, thank you so much, dude. <laughs> You are something else, I tell you what. I hope you got your packages that I sent you. Um, so again, we're just gonna break it right there. And uh, that is how I would do that around something right there, okay? I always wanna have my edge to come up here flush. I wouldn't wanna do my corner like that because then you got a void right there. But still, even doing that, I mean, it looks all chopped up and stuff like that. So 
pretty much <clears throat> plus you got the extra banging and stuff like that always want to be respectful in someone's house where you don't <coughs> where you don't have to uh make any more racket <coughs> excuse me you don't have to make <coughs> any more racket <coughs> excuse me y'all you don't have to make any more racket than you have to okay here's the hatchet okay this is actually not so bad i mean <coughs> pretty clean cut also, you can take and just turn it around and weld it. So, uh, people that use hatchets, it ain't too bad. You know what I'm saying? I just never got used to it. Um, it actually makes a halfway decent, oops, halfway decent clean cut there, okay? But again, you got all the unnecessary banging and stuff like that. I mean, you have to do that and then that. So, uh, a lot of unnecessary banging. <clears throat> you got your 10 snips here. They're gonna cut, not so bad, okay? But look what, look what happens here when you use 10 snips. Every bit of that is just in your grip alone, okay? So you have to, I, I could probably do that with one hand, but my wrist is acting up a little bit today. Uh, but anyway, you uh, um, you, get it, you get a decently clean cut on that right there. But again, everything about it is just in your grip. So every bit of the cutting force is in your grip. That, these right here, um, I cannot remember honestly how much I gave for these. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for them, but these cutters right here. These are the crane um, Let's see here. I've had them so long. I can't even hardly see the number crane 450 looks like tack strip cutters. I've had these for 22 years. Okay This is the only pair of tack strip cutters. I've ever had in my life I've had them ever since I was 19 and first started on my own Okay, so look at here and I would like to say this box right here, this box of tack strip blades, it comes a 10 pack per box. You see that 451 crane tack strip cutter blades. This is only the second box that I've ever had to buy in my life. These tack strip cutters last so long. Look at the blades here. I want to show you the blades, how thick they are and stuff. So they're, uh, let me get up here where I can see what's going on here. Okay. So, uh, let's see. So look at the blade. You can see that it's pretty daggum thick. You see that? So it actually takes quite a bit to dull it down to where it won't cut, okay? These are, they will cut for a long time, even if they do get a little chewed up or ridges in them or something like that. Look at these blades right here. See, these are quite minimal. I've had these in here for probably a year or longer and they just barely got some nicks on them, okay? So these blades are extremely tough. Like I said, I've used less than 20 blades. I've used, let's see here. I got, I'll tell you exactly how many I got here. So I've got uh, one, two, I still got two sets left. So that is uh, five sets per pack. So five, six, seven, eight. So in 22 years, now check this out. In 22 years of owning these tack strip cutters, I have changed the blades eight times, okay? That's pretty phenomenal that any blade will continue to cut that much for that long, eight times in 22 years. And look, watch this. Let me point it down here and I'll show you. It still gets really good cuts, okay? So look right here. Let me back up a little bit. So right here's my tack strip. Look here. And what, see that? What is good, what's good about that? If you'll notice this little thing right here, see that right there? You can actually get your hand under that and push down on the floor so you're not even using your grip at all. Rather, whenever you're using, you're using the 10 snip cutters, um, it's all grip because you can't mash down on the floor with that or you're gonna be mashing your fingers. However, these are made just for that. It's got that nice flat spot there. You can put your hand right down on the floor and just push straight down. You don't have to use any grip at all. So look at here once again. Okay, now watch this. <clears throat> I'm just gonna run tack strip right around this triangle real fast and then I'll show you. I don't hardly have enough, so uh, I only got X amount in here. So if you wanna, if you know your customer is gonna be coming in here, you're gonna want it to look pretty. So, um, oops, got that turned around there. 
I could have done a little bit more angle on that. But anyway, look at the uh, cleanness. Let me turn this around. Look at the cleanness of the cuts. Look right here. That's quite a gap. I don't, I, I'm just a purely demonstration. But anyway, look at, look at that right there. Like I said, these blades have not been changed in over a year. So, and that was, that's with over a year. That's the other end that it cut off of. So I'm still getting plenty good of clean cuts versus, uh, right there, smacking it with a hammer. Um, I think that right there was the hatchet. That's not too bad. That's pretty nice and clean as well. Um, anyway, so the convenience, the convenience of being able to hold these, mash down, get you some nice, pretty cuts. I mean, if you got angles, we've always used 10 snips. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people do that. Uh, then again, that's exactly what I was talking about there. You always have to use uh, your grip and stuff like that. Jared, again, I want to thank you, buddy. That was really awesome. There's actually a lot of people that use the 10 snips, so that's why I wanted to point this out. Plus, the uh, gentleman asked me why I did use the uh, tack strip cutters and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's purely uh, what I just showed right there about being able to push down on the floor. Let me turn this around one more time here. Uh, let's see. been able to do that and nice clean cut all the time okay this is just a, a you don't have to have this it's pretty much a luxury however because I have been used to it I'll always have some as a matter of fact when I just went to that uh, convention there in um, uh, San Antonio I actually got me a new pair there if you look right down inside of here I want to show you that right there see that spring right down in there I will say you can see how it's kind of stretched out right there um, that spring has broke on me four times if I ain't mistaken. So I keep just stretching it, pulling it up. Oops. I'll stretch it, pull it up, and put it back on that little hook again that's right there. Stretch it, pull it up on that hook, stretch it, and pull it up on that hook every time it breaks. However, that has been the only thing that has broke. There is a little screw point that goes in um, right there, and I'll show you on this other set of cutters. So this is the Roberts pair that I got. However, my little uh, thing right here that holds them locked on my crane set has been gone for many, many years. I don't even know how long, but either way, I put them like that and just stuff them down in the pocket on my uh, bucket buddy. So it don't matter about that really. But anyways, these the crane cutters come with one of these as well. And also it has this little screw stop right here. So it will adjust up and down. You can turn that screw and it causes your thing to close more or less. So, um, when I lost mine, it don't really matter because it goes all the way to anyway. It never has bothered me one bit not having that little screw thing in there. Um, the, the difference, I haven't used these. I just now opened them specifically for this video. And um, I don't know if it's because I've used these for so long and I like the way it feels because I, I have used them so long. Listen to that. So that's because that spring is so tight in there now where it's broke so uh, four times over the years. But anyway, these right here, compared to these, um, I think this right here comes back. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it, buddy. So I think these... Um, is angled back more right here. I think it's kind of hard to tell, but to me, whenever I'm using these, it feels like that this is more in my way. Like if I, it's got the finger grooves right there in it. And if I was to actually put my fingers, <coughs> excuse me, if I was actually to put my fingers right there in the grooves, then look how far back I would be on the handle. So that's just not even comfortable. This top part don't line up with the finger grooves. So in order for it to feel good right up here at the top, I have to have my hand way up here on it. So I think this design right here should just be a little bit more stubby like these are right here. Okay, so these, I can have my hand right here perfect and it's right here perfect at the same time whether I don't have to be way back here or way up here. It has no finger grooves or anything like that. These just fit perfect. Rather this in order to have it right here, like I said, you gotta be way up here on this. So um, I'm gonna start using these just because they are brand new and these, I'm a little bit crazy about uh, um, 
squeaking and stuff like that any kind of noise that any kind of unnecessary noise I always try to eliminate it at work so I am listen to that. these things feel all nice and tight and stuff like that um, I think I seen Go Coast Flooring a while ago say something about tools don't last like they used to and um, he's exactly right man I tell you what you guys probably seen oops sorry about that you guys probably seen uh, videos I did when I was out at Tucson about my uh, boss stitch staple gun that I use so often when I'm doing underlayment. Um, I bragged on it. I have one for, um, I guess about probably 18 or 19 years, something like that. I had the one for a super duper long time and it finally went out on me. And since it went out, I've actually been through three uh, two, two. I've got my second one in the last two years, actually just in the last year. I've no two years. Okay. I've, I've got one, I've got two in the last two years. And then I had one for the previous 18 or 19 years, however long it has been. So, um, if you got any old tools, by all means, don't replace them for new ones just because you're getting a new one because the new ones by no means outlast will last near as long. I still got my old, I still got, look at here. Let me turn this around. So this is, uh, this is my old, look here. You can tell how old it is because it says Stanley Bostich. I don't know how long they've not been Stanley Bostich or advertised like that. Now they're just straight up Bostich. Um, <clears throat> that's awesome. I've got, uh, I've only had a couple of crane knee kickers myself and they last extremely well. Um, so this, this is the new staple gun. So you can see that that just says Boston's. Look at the difference uh, right there and right there. The color's a little different. This is pretty much, this is pretty much the same build, almost the same gun as a um, underlayment gun except for the nose part right here is different. I think the gun is the same. It even holds the same staples. Okay. I think just the attachment right here for the hardwood is the only difference in it. Uh, the cool thing about this particular gun is it does have the adjustment right here for different thicknesses of wood. However, I would always use this on, you know, different thicknesses too, three sixteenths or a quarter or whatever. It was just uh, in the way that you angled it or whatever. I've always used that for all of my staple down wood. Now they've actually made it with that little thing. So this thing will slide up and down and make it fit just perfect, but it does move up and down. You have to retighten it. When I did that hickory job here a while back, I did have to readjust this and tighten it back down twice because it would slide and move out of position on you. So that's that's the downside of new new tools there. It even looked cheaper. Um, all right, well, I don't have, that's what I was pretty much wanting to say uh, about the tack strip cutters. So again, we got the original tack strip cutters. There's a pair of Roberts, there's a pair of Crane. Uh, a lot of people use 10 snips. A lot of people will use a hatchet. I got, actually got that. Compliments of Gold Coast Flooring. Give me that when we was in Arizona, if I ain't mistaken. Uh, somebody's out there shooting a rifle or something. Anyway, there's my trusty old Stanley hammer that I've had for so long. Do you use a stinger? No, I don't use a stinger. I've actually never even used a stringer, a stinger whatsoever. Uh, technically you're not supposed to a lot of people do and that's you know whatever they do they do but I've never used one and I don't even like the fact of gouging a hole in in the carpet for the stinger tail so I'll, I'll, I've never had one I've seen it used and that's it I've never owned one in my life I've always always since I first started used a pole stretcher um, I do want to point out one more thing right here really quick before I get off of here. So um, in that box of tools that I got from Roberts the other day came one of these pry bars here. And I wanna point something out about that Roberts pry bar. I don't, I don't know if this is gonna be good or bad, okay? So this, I've been using these right here forever, okay? Uh, taking the poles, 
taking out the pose makes such a difference. So this, you can see that I've been using this particular kind and it's made by uh, uh, Vaughn, looks like V-A-U-G-H-A-N. I don't know how you pronounce that, but anyway, that's the brand. Let me see if I can make that see, right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but anyway, V-A, uh, V-A-U-G-H-N. And if you'll notice right here, this has been my only thing I have not liked about these is it has very little angle right here. I mean, look at this. So whenever you got it right there and you push it all the way down, that's all you got. I mean, it's like maybe an inch and a half, inch and a quarter off the floor right here. So you don't have a whole lot of movement if you're underneath something to raise up. Like if you wanted to get a good pry on it, I mean, look, that's not very much at all right here. So if this is all the way on the floor, you just got a little bit. Look at this one. Look at the difference in that one. So this one is dramatically, when it comes to bend, having a bend, look at that. Okay, uh, let's see, there you go. Now you can see it better. So I don't know if I'm gonna like that much, but a little bit more bend would be good. I, when I get to using this, I'll see if I like it or not, and we'll go from there. The reason why I think I might not like it is because whenever you're using a Shumo lifter, that's what I call these pry bars. I call them a Shumo lifters just so you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, you like this right here. You're, ha you're hitting it right here and tapping it underneath your tack strip or whatever you're trying to pull up. With this, to get it underneath of something, look how high I have to have it. And then, so I don't know, I kind of like the way that feels because it don't have a lot rather than hitting way up high on it like that. So I don't know if I want to be too fond of having such a big curve right here on the end or it's straight like this. I know I wish this did have a little bit more, maybe not that dramatic though. So we'll leave it at that and I'll find out how I like that after I use it for a little bit. And I was using Stanley tape measures. I've always, always used these my entire career. The Stanley 25 foot tape measures, always the same square ones, okay? However, I usually buy them four or five at a time, three, four, five at a time, and uh, <clears throat> I always check them, or I try to always check them anyway. Oops, I gotta, let me change my position. I got a big bright light right behind me there. Um, I will usually try to change uh, or check my uh, tape measures before I buy them, but a lot of times I'll forget. So I'll do this and see how it comes back. However, sometimes I do forget and I'll just go grab four or five of them from the store. And sure enough, usually out of four or five, one of them, I mean, if you pull it out a little bit, it's not very fast. You get it out there like that. A lot of times you even have to lean it up to make it come back. So almost, I think all four of them I got last time was really slow winding up. I said, I'm not gonna get these anymore. This came in the box the other day that I won from, uh, Actually, it was given to me at the thing, the Roberts box. And I do, this is a 30-footer. I've never used 30-footers because I don't like the extra weight. However, let me see here. Uh, this rubber grip on it right here, this is like a, all rubber. I mean, you can see right here, look. See how it bends and stuff like that? It flexes on it right there. It, listen, hear how that sounds? Well, you can't hardly tell it like that. You can listen to it. I'm tapping it on the floor versus the Stanley. So that was the difference. And I, I like the feel of it. So I'm gonna start using this, see how I like it. You see that? It's actually got actually got a little bit of a pop back right here. Right there, do you see that pop, pop? It comes back so good. Versus my Stanley tape. Let's check it out. Okay, well that did not have a pop back at all. Uh, I don't know, I kinda, I think that might be better that it don't have a pop back because it might mean that it's a little bit tighter made. But however, they don't come back near as fast. So I done told myself last time I wasn't gonna get the Stanleys no more. So I was thinking about what I was gonna get last time. I don't know if I wanna go with DeWalt or whatever. I've been looking at them almost every single time I go in Home Depot or something. I look at the tape measures and I feel of them and stuff like that. After using these particular tape measures, or as a matter of fact, any particular tape measure, for so many years, you so get the feel of something, you know, it's just so, such a habit of the way these work, they feel, and everything in your hand, it's gonna be really hard to switch.
tape measures. Uh, so I've been looking and filling and all, every time I go in the store. Thank you, Christian. Appreciate that. All you guys are really appreciate that. Thank you again, Go Coast. Uh, have a good night, everyone. I guess there's some people jumping off there. You're welcome. It works so well when you're installing click together planks and tile. Um, uh, I missed that. I missed it. Anyway, um, I love your page, man. I appreciate your knowledge. Thank you. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in and stuff. Uh, again, um, I'll turn this around one more time. I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I'll let you guys see one more time here. I'm kind of proud of it because it's turning out really well. I definitely wanted the old school look. My whole point was to make it look like an old farmhouse. And I told my wife I was going to get... Um, I was going to be looking for, uh, uh, this is what I said, East Wings makes an I beam pry bar, and it's the best for pry. Oh, okay, I got you, got you. So I told my wife I was going to be looking for an old house out in the country that I could go take some siding off and stuff like that. Come to find out I had that barn at the end of the street I've been seeing ever since we've been here. And I finally asked the gentleman what he was going to do with it, and he said I could have some. So I was able to get all these enough of what I needed anyway off the siding of it the other day and I got the front you own a few shipping containers um, there I got one two um, three four I got four of them here on the property so um, this in here is actually some different offices yeah okay my wife said four yeah took me just a second I forgot um, going around the outside of this one right here to get in it there's an underground bunker that actually goes down underneath my shop i asked one time about um if you guys wanted me to do a video on that and i forgot so one of these days i will do that but um my studio is getting close so i'm fixing to be definitely up for options on um i'm fixing to be ready to just do take our request on um videos and stuff like that well counting the office there office there there is five. Oh, uh i'm not exactly sure what she's talking about there maybe uh one two one two three four i think she I think there's only four i think she might be miss i think she might be a little confused about something anyway <clears throat> we'll get an argument right here on <clears throat> on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I know, shipping containers. I know that's what you're talking about. This one right here, sweetie. This one right here is the one we go in and keep the pull supplies in on the outside. It's just the inside of it is inside the studio here, so it's the same same container. But anyway, uh, not going to talk about that right now. We'll fight later on. We'll duke it out. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. And Mr uh dave i hope this helps you whenever you see it and i hope it encourages you to get you a set of uh the crane tack strip cutters number four let's see if i can see it again uh number 450 <clears throat> tack strip cutters because like i said i have had them for 22 years and i've changed blades eight times so it don't matter what they cost, they're well worth it. You'll never have to buy another set. Rather, if you uh, use 10 snips and stuff like that, you're going to go through them. They're just not built like those tack strip cutters are. So you, they're definitely worth the money, no matter what you have to pay for them, okay? Anyway, I really do appreciate you guys for uh, tuning in here. I am about to croak, as always. Whenever I get on here and ramble on, my throat gets dry and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get off here. I ain't even had a shower. Look back in the behind me there. I'll show you what I did today. This was like not a whole lot of fun. Uh, I'm doing another wood job and in the kitchen area, let me turn around. So all this tile, there was tile put down and a backer board and then whoever built the house put down a particle board as underlayment. So there was underlayment, I mean particle board underneath the cabinets and everything like that. And yesterday, today, we took all this up. And yesterday, we took up about 300 uh, feet of nail down, I mean, glue down wood, getting ready to install all downstairs of 
some more hickory hardwood and then another uh, master bedroom and hallway upstairs of hardwood. And the rest of the house is gonna be carpet. I thought I was gonna to get to do the steps and I was really looking forward to it because the steps were open-sided. The first five, four or five steps were open on one side with spindles and I was really looking forward to doing some wood on that because that would have turned out to be a really, really pretty job. But the owner of the house is going to do them um, so the people are actually just flipping the house to make some money. So he's going to, he decided he was going to do those steps himself. So that was kind of a bummer. I was walking away from that job like, yes, when I thought that I was going to get to do them. And I went down, it wasn't on the paperwork. So I asked the guy at the carpet store, I said, we done them? He's like, no, the guy's doing them. I was like, crap, because <laughs> I was psyched up. I, I like doing stuff like that. I like doing real meticulous, picky kind of work because it just feels good and it looks beautiful always. Whenever you walk away from a really nice job like that, it just feels really good so um anyway with that being said uh as you i don't know if you guys seen or not i still got a whole lot of work to do actually on this i do got the outside looking uh pre halfway presentable i'm still going to put a roof up over here uh old metal roof and um i got this not this one right here but this i got a two by six that's going to go on the front beam right there and then i have some really old barn wood that's going to run perpendicular i think that's the right word this way on the front porch so that's just going to set everything off to be completely old and uh, like i said there's going to be a metal roof overhanging right here hanging over the porch and stuff like that and i got tons of old rusty little antiques to hang on the front of the house some spittoons and stuff like that so i'm really excited about dressing this up and making it look nice so uh, I'll show you if you want a couple of things back here. I don't know if I want to have light enough to do it or not, but <clears throat> thank you. I appreciate that, whoever said that. So this right here, these boards right here, uh, let me get back, see if I can see them good enough. These are what's going to go on my front porch. I got like four, uh, four foot of a porch. These boards are about five foot, so I'll have enough. Uh, just to cut all the bat off of each end and it'll be perfect to be on the porch right over there you can see uh, right there is the two by six that's going to go on the very front to cover up that new wood uh, like i was just talking about and then i've got a whole bunch see uh, a real old lantern right here uh, just some old uh here's an old spittoon uh, old tobacco knives and stuff like that can, uh, canteens right there, another canteen. I got a really old uh, two-man saw right there that actually has uh, two handles on it, which is kind of hard to find one with two handles. So uh, I don't think I'm going to be adding the TV in here, Christian. It's going to be strictly a workplace. It's going to be where I make my videos and stuff. So it's, I won't be lounging around in here. It'll be a workplace. But anyway, uh, the rustic the old farmhouse rustic theme. Yeah, and just what my wife said there, we're de uh, we already got one and I'll definitely have another one. Uh, what is the saw called? Which one are you talking about? The one that's pointing at right there? Is that the one you're talking about? But with one hand, oh, the great big one over here in the corner. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the actual name of it is. I know it, it takes two men to run it because it's got two handles. It's for cutting great old big uh, wood. Uh, trees down with they used them back in the day uh, like I said I'm not sure exactly what it is called so anyway um, I don't know that you guys will be as enthused or excited about it as I am but I can hardly contain myself I'm so excited uh, since I got the front of this thing going on it's got me really really pumped up and ready to go so I've been, what I've been doing, I've been trying to use all of the money that comes in on my channel is what I've been, uh, <laughs> welcome to Potterville, <laughs> uh, uh, FBSB Studios or something like that. I don't know. I'll think of some kind of name for it. Um, I've been taking the money that comes in from the channel. Like I said, I don't make a fortune or nothing like that by no means, but what comes in every month, I'll take that money and then that's what I sink uh, into this. This is what I've bought. I've only used a couple thousand dollars of my own personal money 
everything else that I've used, that I've bought and stuff like that has strictly came from the YouTube channel. So you guys are definitely helping out with this and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, every, every little contribution, all your views, all your uh, ad watching, everything that y'all do are helping put this thing together. I just want y'all to know that everything is definitely going to a good use, okay? I don't, I, I, like I said, all this come from YouTube money. So, uh, like I said, except for the first initial lumber buy, I bought that out of my pocket. But outside of that, every month when my YouTube money comes in, I'll take that and I'll buy supplies, I'll buy nails, uh, whatever I need to work on this is what comes from the money that you guys donate or just from my ads or whatever like that. So you guys are basically paying for this for me. So I really, really do appreciate that. I wanted to let you guys know that, let you guys know that your, uh, your super chats and stuff like that definitely are going to a good thing. I'm not out drinking it up or nothing like that. I don't drink or anything like that. So your, your super chats, your ad watching, I've had people say that they sit through all the ads and stuff like that just because they know that it does help, and it does. So I greatly appreciate you guys doing that and all the views and everything, okay? Like right now, sitting here for 36 minutes, YouTube loves this, okay? They love it whenever you can hold an audience for this long. I don't intend that to happen. I just get to talking whenever it happens. Whenever I get on a live stream, I just talk, 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 talk. I don't, I don't mean to be like that, but I'm passionate about this trade, so whenever I get to talking, I just like to talk about it. But anyway, you guys, you, you guys hear me say that a lot. But anyways, because I'll start just like running and running and running with getting off topic and stuff like that. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know it is appreciated. And this is what you guys are paying for, okay? Thank you guys so much. My uh, um, uh, Jared Hawkins, uh, Nick... Um, Nick with Go Coast, um, uh, Ricky Howard, uh, I think Christian Wilson did a super chat just a little bit ago. All you guys that send super chats and everything else strictly goes toward adding to the channel. It, rather, it would be uh, this little mini me that I'm holding right here to get smooth footage. I bought this with uh, YouTube money. Anything that I use on anything that I use on this channel, I use the money from the channel to build the channel, okay? So all of it goes right back into the channel, okay? So thank you guys, I really do appreciate it. I'm gonna get off here. Again, my throat is really dry. I've been rambling on here for 37, almost 38 minutes now. Um, I've got $89 in Super Chats. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. I really do appreciate it. Until next time. Oh yeah, uh, I wanna make, I wanna, uh, remember, you guys, tomorrow at 8 o'clock, uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m., I am having the gentleman from CFI is going to come over, and we're going to do a live stream, and you guys can ask any questions. Oh, Dacom. You guys can ask any questions that you want about Romanoff flooring, about the CFI, about anything like that. This guy's been in the CFI for uh, 20 five years and he has been with Romanoff flooring for 21 years and he is uh, operations management or something like that uh, I put it on the post anyway he's got all kinds of titles because he's into all kinds of stuff but anyway you guys yeah 8 8 8 p.m. tomorrow central time uh, you guys feel please if you want join in if you want to know anything about Romanoff or CFI and he's also got a little bonus of some very important stuff Probably, I'm sure, stuff that I don't even know about because he's like a master installer up in the rankings and stuff like that. So, uh, should get some super awesome information and knowledge tomorrow night. You guys join in, and until tomorrow night, FBSB is out.